everyone. Uh, today we're going to be potting a tiny little Phalaenopsis orchid. It is most definitely a rescue situation. And while I'm kind of getting ready here to do this, I need to give you the backstory on this little tiny orchid. I was at my local garden center, oh, I would say maybe like about two or three weeks ago, and they had a section of orchids that were very, very discounted, like $5 a piece, and they were mostly dead. But I had a look through the pots, and there was one where, even though the mother plant was completely dead, not even a stem left, the media on top looked awful, but there was this tiny little basal keiki that was still just but barely attached and had developed its own set of roots resting on top of the media. And I thought, well, for $5, I'm going to see if I can save that little orchid. This is always a great learning experience for me because I try different ways to uh, get rescue orchids to be successful. So I brought this one home. I threw the entire pot away with the, the rotten mother plant and it didn't take much to separate this. It, it just pulled off very easily. And I brought it in the house and I got a plastic baggie for it with some slightly damp sphagnum moss in the bottom. And for the last two weeks, this little orchid has been resting its roots just on top of that sphagnum moss like that. Every once in a while I would seal up the bag to let the moisture kind of collect in there and then I would open the bag so that the air could circulate. And I've been doing that for about two weeks. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at this little orchid and decide how to get it in this pot. Now this orchid pot has been used before but it has been thoroughly washed in hot water and soap. So it's clean, it can be used again. And we're going to pot this little Phalaenopsis orchid and it will be a complete surprise someday when it grows larger and will hopefully bloom for me. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the thing to keep in mind with an orchid like this is that the roots were mostly aerial um, while it was attached to the mother plant and resting on, on top of the um, media. And by keeping this in the bag of sphagnum moss for a couple of weeks, I have tried to begin adjusting these roots for a little bit more moisture content because once these roots are down in the media, there's going to be an adjustment that it has to go through and, and I don't want these, these roots to succumb uh, because the adjustment was too difficult for it. So I have been trying to keep them a bit more moist the last couple of weeks. We're going to start by putting some really, really large orchid bark chunks in the bottom of this pot. And the reason I'm doing this is because you can see that the holes on the bottom of this pot are rather large. And if I drop the little tiny media inside there first, it's just going to fall out the bottom. So I'm putting some large orchid bark chunks in the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of my regular orchid bark that has some medium wood pieces in it. It has a little bit of lica, it has a little bit of sponge rock, it has a little bit of sphagnum moss. And this is just kind of my general mix for repotting Phalaenopsis orchids. And we're going to put in a little bit of charcoal for good measure. I have no earthly idea if this helps or if it doesn't but I use it and then because this orchid is small and still trying to adjust and will need to you know be able to get its roots into something I'm mixing in some smaller bark pieces that is typically used as a potting media for lady slipper orchids So I'm going to mix that in. And, you know, I, I sort of have a, a standard potting method for 
most of my larger established orchids, but because this one is a baby, I've decided to do this one a little bit different. So we're going to have to adjust for the height of the bark here. And when this little plant is in this pot, I want the media to just but barely cover these orchids. I want to make sure they have plenty of air circulation so that they can get oxygen. I don't want to suffocate these little roots that have been used to more air than anything else. And it will be okay if it's potted a little bit low here. And we'll keep adding. Pot. So we're checking for height here. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and let this be potted kind of low because the pot is just the tiniest bit too large for this orchid. I uh, have also strategically left I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a little tiny green root that's right up against the interior of the plastic pot, and that's going to kind of allow me to see how that root is doing. You know, make sure that it's not suffocating, making sure that it turns green when I water this orchid. And. I'm going to press down just a little bit, not overdoing it because I do want this to stay airy with a lot of air spaces in between the bark and the other pieces of media. Okay, so that's it. We're going to give this little orchid a new chance at life and hopefully in 10 years maybe it'll bloom for me. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and the subscribe button if you have not already done that. More videos to come. Thanks for watching. So when you're filming things very closely, it oftentimes causes you to get what you're trying to show out of the camera range. So I'm gonna hopefully zoom in again here a little bit and show you this tiny little green root right here up against the edge of the pot and that's the root that I will be watching to make sure that it's continuing to look healthy and absorb water. So this little orchid has been given a good watering. You can see the roots that are laying on top of the media have greened up really nicely which is exactly what I hoped would happen.